Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Um, just decided to put the radio build on the back burner for um, for a while because I've got several trips coming up and um, very difficult to put some time into it. And what I've decided to do for those for those periods where I am at home, um, I want to build up a, a network, um, or I shouldn't say network, I want to do a, a scalar network analyzer, just a nice little simple one. Um, this particular piece of test equipment has been done many many times and, and there's certainly many examples on the internet um, I, I want to sort of just I guess not so much go back to first principles but try and roll my own as a um, as a learning uh, experience so I purchased a few things off um, AliExpress I've got uh, down here in the little ant, uh, Altoids tin here an AD8307 um, logarithmic amplifier uh, decided rather than, because it was pretty cheap, rather than just buying um, the, the 8307 uh, by itself, I decided to buy this little breakout board around it, um, and that wasn't very much at all. Um, that particular board there uh, runs from uh, 2.7 to 5.5 volts um, DC, so I've just elected to take the 3.3 volts um, off the back of the, the mega board down there. Um, the input is on the left hand side here and uh, the output is either through the SMA which has a DC output or the other DC output down there on the solder pads uh, and at the moment I've just got that going straight through uh, into the um, the Spear A15 um, analog pin on the um, on the Omega and we'll have a look what's going on there in a sec. So that's so I purchased that. Um, I already had lying around in the uh, the junk box uh, an 809850 um, DDS board there. Um, I haven't been using these uh, recently in, in radios because it only has a single output, um, but it's a nice it's a it's certainly a nice easy board to use. At the moment, that's just hanging straight off um, some spare digital pins uh, on the back of the, uh, the 9850. Um, for the VCC pin, uh, it's got it tied high, so it's outputting 5 volts, and the ground pin has got it tied low, um, providing that uh, that current sink there, or well, the ground I should say, um, and it's certainly not drawing um, excess of what the current capabilities are for each of the digital pins, and that's working well. Um, that 3. Point, I think it's about a 3.5 inch screen if I recall, um, was just a handful of dollars too from the same site. So I've uh, got a couple of those uh, to put in the junk box, and then just a um, just a sort of a stock standard clone um, Arduino Mega, um, and I, I chose that because this is a a a, a, um, a plug-in board, and on a normal Arduino, um, I didn't have any I couldn't I didn't have any spare analog pins. So by going to the Mega, I had the spare analog pins, I had the spare digital pins here to power this just to make it a little bit nice and easy. So that's just a uh, a rough and ready test set up just to sort of play around with the with the hardware and just sort of get a bit of a better idea of uh, sort of what's going on here. Um, we'll come back to that in a sec. So just sort of concentrating on this little board here, what I've been trying to do um, is look at the the uh, on the, the 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 website itself where I purchased it from. It was all in Chinese, which um, wasn't overly helpful for me, but uh, it had a couple of bits of data there on the sheet. It had a, a table here um, and what looks like to be just a straight out plot of the table data. Uh, and what they've done here, they've taken five different frequencies, one through 500 megs, at different values of uh, input um, power, so dBm, reference to one milliwatt, um, and then just, I guess, my understanding is showing what the output voltage will be um, for those combinations. So at the moment I've got the SIG Gen set up on 1 megahertz, and I've just been playing around with different values of the input to see if I could actually emulate the same output. Um, so I'll just come back to here, and that's what we're seeing here. So we've got our our um, our plotting, or more the point is monitoring the output of the SIG Gen, and then on the meter there, uh, that's reading the output of the 98. So again, the 8307, that amplifier there. So those two um, outputs there are going through to the spear analog pins and then the, the voltmeter just hanging across that. So what I've been trying to do is, uh, what's the best way of doing that? We'll sit over there. So I've, I've currently got it set up on um, four volts peak to peak. Um, at this stage, I'm not going to 
well, I will make an observation. Um, that doesn't align with with the table at all in terms of if I assume this is a 50 ohm and I've currently got a, a 50 ohm resistor there, a 51 ohm resistor uh, across the output of the SIGGEN so in terms of referencing uh, milliwatts reference to 50 ohms then uh, that should be um, 10 log our voltage RMS squared over 50 ohms and then that answer divided by uh, well in the brackets I should say, divided by 1 milliwatt. So suffice to say uh, it's not aligning with that particular table. Now according to, um, uh, get both in shot there, according to that table if I was to add in uh, 10 dB of uh, additional attenuation, so dropping that down um, 10 dB, then I should see that voltage there drop from 1.9 down to about 1.7. So we can dial that in, so we can go 8 and 2 makes 10. Um, we can see up there that our amplitude's dropped off um, as, as we expected, but I'm not seeing a, uh, a huge reduction in that, which is interesting. You know, if I add in another 20 dB, now we're starting to see a reduction, another 20 dB again, uh, and more and more. So that's of interest. Um, I don't know if it's the way I've got things set up. Um, Again, this is, uh, for me, a, a big learning experience. Um, so I guess it's just a matter of now trying to work out what's going on. It may just turn out at the end of the day that this particular board down here, that's just that's just the way it is. Um, and if that's the case, then I'll look to build into the software um, a calibration routine, either prior to every test or, or hardwired in to take into consideration um, the characteristics of this particular board and as we'll see also the characteristics of the um, the 809850 and I should also say there will be a need um, to have on the output of the 809850 uh, another uh, RF amplifier there um, I'm not going to use um, the common circuit that's on the internet I'll just roll my own just for the for sake of it um, the output of that will be a 40B pad um, I chose 4DB, well it's going to be the pad there to, to make sure I'm presenting to the device under test, which is over here, um, a nice 50 ohm load. Um, and I chose minus 4DB because it just made the, the resistor values nice and easy. So 220 already exists, and then I can add 20 and a couple of ones to bring up to um, uh, up to that 24 or more the point. But yeah, right. Anyway, um, so anyway, that... Uh, that will have its own characteristics in regards to what its gain will be across the HF spectrum. So if notionally 3 to 30 megs. Um, so I need to dial that into the overall calibration to work out what's going on here. So um, like I say, that's interesting in regards to that board there. Um, and I will just see what happens as we move forward. Right. Um, the next thing I want to look at there is the AD9850. So this little board here, I've got some test software running on the Mega that's just cycling the output between um, three, ooh, yeah, 3 and 30 megs. Um, and if I was just to loop that through there, put that into there, and we can see that coming up on the scope now. So let me just crank it up a bit. So that's now running, like I say, from uh, 3 to 30 megs. Um, and as you can see there, that that's that's the output there is is decreasing in, in amplitude um, from the lower to the higher frequencies. So that's going to be yet another aspect to build into the overall calibration routine to to offset that. Um, but that's that's of interest. Yeah, just uh, I was just using this um, filter here just to get an idea of uh, what the output may look like as it was scrolling through, but again, not really required for what, what I was doing. Um, as you can see up there on the, on the scope, so that's the uh, the 40 meter low pass filter that will be sitting up after the power amp. So you can see the lower frequency I was getting through, and then uh, up to, uh, can't quite recall what it was, about eight megs thing. It's uh, dropping off, which is good. Okay, um, I think that's probably about all I want to say at this stage of the game. We'll just keep playing around. Uh, what I do want to do as an add-on to this is build that um, a bridge 
um, and then look to combine this into both a, a scalar network analyzer as well as the um, uh, the antenna analyzer. Um, so I'm not to use that to um, to tune up the uh, the antenna as well. So that'll be an add-on bit which I'll do in due course. But uh, all good fun, um, interesting, and uh, hopefully at the end of the day we'll have a uh, a nice relatively cheap. Um, Network analyzer, which will make, like I say, the design of these sorts of uh, crystal or these sort of filters here, as well as um, uh, characterizing uh, crystals themselves for selection for crystal filters, uh, and then also the crystal filter. So it, there's no reason why any of that um, can't be analyzed using this just to speed up. Um, in terms of software, um, I'm going to do one. I'm going to do two things there. We'll have the uh, the output being plotted on this. For sure, um, but I'll also dump out on the serial port uh, the, the 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 test frequency and then the value as well, um, just to have that um, saved off this device as well as the ability to. Um, I guess there's no reason why I can't then use sheets to to plot that differently or to do um, several plots. I don't know. You know, software, software. So you can do whatever you like. Um, that's probably about all for now, so I'll say 73s and, uh, and continue playing around. Cheers all.